Today we're going to talk about cells, specifically some of the major functions of cells. In fact, cells do a ton of different things. But one of the key things that they do is they produce proteins for the body. Proteins, as we've mentioned, do almost everything. So therefore, the fact that cells make proteins makes this an extremely important part of their job. They do some other things too, and don't forget every spell, cell is a little bit specialized. But what I want to do right now is focus mostly on the protein production process by thinking of the cell as a protein producing factory. Of course, proteins are boring to produce, so instead of a protein producing factory, let's make this something maybe a little bit more exciting. It could be a chocolate bar producing factory. In fact, let's be really fancy and make Cadbury Dairy Milks with proper British chocolate and cream. You know, the good stuff. All right. The first thing I need is to actually have the outline of a factory. I need to build the physical parts of my factory. So I need a cell membrane. That's going to be the outline of my factory. And anything else that has an outline is also made out of a membrane. Membranes, you might remember, are made mostly of lipids so that they are hydrophobic, which is good because they'll keep out the elements, especially if your factory is in a cold or a wet place. Sometimes they're also made of proteins, but that's important later on. So how do we make a chocolate bar? Well, I have some idea of how to make it, but to do it properly... I'm going to need some kind of instructions. And so to make proteins, the cells also need some kind of instructions. They keep those instructions in one large central office. And that central office is the nucleus. So the nucleus of the cell is pretty important because it contains all of the instructions. Let me make that so you can actually see it. There's our nucleus. All right. So now that we have a nucleus, what's going to be inside of it? Well, we need to store all of the data. A computer's probably a good place for that. So we'll store our major data on a computer. Here it's sitting on a little table. Here's our little office manager. He'll keep track of all of the information. The computer is where we store things forever. That's going to be a lot like our DNA. The DNA is stored in the nucleus. The only problem with that is that it's not particularly useful if you need the information to go do something with. So, for instance, making a chocolate bar. I'm not going to make a chocolate bar in the office. Therefore, I need to send that information somewhere. I can send the information by printing out or sending essentially little memos that have the instructions that I need. And in this case, only the instructions I need. The DNA holds all of the instructions for everything all the time. But in this way, I just get the instructions for making my Cadbury bar because that's what I'm trying to make. So this little message or memo, that would be our RNA. In this case, it's our messenger RNA or mRNA. And the process of getting the DNA to the RNA is transcription because somebody had to transcribe it, but it's still almost the same thing because it's a nucleic acid. So now I need to worry about actually making my chocolate bar. Well, I'm not going to just make the chocolate bar. This is a factory. So I'm going to have a machine do all of the mixing for me and have it spit out an appropriately sized piece of chocolate. So Here's my little mixing machine. It's got a place and maybe a little mixer tool. Obviously, I'm going to dump my ingredients into it, and that's going to be a key thing. So it's going to take all of the materials and turn them into my chocolate bar. Oh, I should get those materials into the cell first. They have to come from the outside because I'm certainly not going to grow cacao trees in here. So I've got my cocoa beans and maybe a bag of sugar that's going to help make this chocolate. And a little carton of cream. Don't worry about the art. It does not get any better. Those are going to enter the cell by going in through these kind of funky little 
openings in the membrane. Those openings are called vesicles. The membrane grabs something, wraps around it, and then brings it into the cell, and there's little containers of vesicles. So let's say that this sort of reddish funny looking thing is my cacao, that's gonna go ahead, be brought in by a vesicle and get added to my mixing pot. The other ones would also get brought in and added to the mixing pot. This fancy mixing pot is actually my ribosome. So the ribosome is the key thing that is going to help make the protein by taking the materials. In this case, it's making our chocolate bar. Once it makes the, mixes the materials properly, it's going to sh spit out a ready-made chocolate bar. It's just a piece of chocolate right now. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just sitting there on a shelf, or in this case, possibly on the floor. Hmm, that seems like a bad idea. Maybe instead of sitting on the floor, what we should do is we should spit it out onto a conveyor belt so that we can get it to where it needs to go. The cell also has a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt of the cell is the endoplasmic reticulum. This part of the endoplasmic reticulum is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We call it the rough R, E for endoplasmic, R, R E R, and that is where the initial product goes to be moved to the next place. This rough ER probably has a bunch of little ribosomes on it, so a bunch of machines mixing some of the different chocolate bars and spitting them out so that there's enough chocolate bars to be had. But like I said, the chocolate bar is not done yet. It's got to keep going, and it needs some things added to it. For instance, perhaps something is added on top, but more likely, it's going to be put into a wrapper. So we're going to put a nice wrapper around it so it's not just chocolate anymore. And that gets done in the other part of the ER, which is also known as the smooth ER. So S-E-R is where other things are done to the proteins. Finishing touches, they're curled in just the right way, bits and pieces get added to them. So in this case, the wrapper added to the chocolate bar. Lipids and other things can also be made in the smooth ER. All right, so here's my chocolate bars, only now they have wrappers on them. And I need to do something with them because otherwise I'm just gonna end up with a pile of chocolate bars on the floor and that seems like a bad idea. So I need to get them to a place where we can put them in appropriate boxes. And there is a place like that. The cell has a boxing and shipping center where we can take the chocolate bars and stack them up in these little boxes and get them ready to ship out. The packaging and shipping center is called the Golgi apparatus. So in our Golgi apparatus, we're gonna go ahead, put the chocolate bars into boxes and eventually spit off more little vesicles, similar to the ones we used to bring stuff in before, that we're gonna use to drop stuff off and bring it out. So here's our little vesicle. Inside of it is our box. Here's my very badly drawn box of chocolate bars. See, the blue means that they're wrapped up and ready to go. And that vesicle will go right over to the edge of the cell where it can go ahead and release that bit, that box of chocolate bars. Whoops, got the wrong color on that one. There's my vesicle, there's my box full of chocolate bars ready to go somewhere else. And that's how we make proteins that get shipped out to other parts of the place, other cells, and other places in the body. So it's a pretty easy process. I'll point it out again so we can make sure we understand it.
reproduction starts with the DNA in the nucleus because that's where all of the instructions that we need are. The DNA in the nucleus is turned into messenger RNA, like little memos that can be sent out to the factories so they know what they're doing. The RNA tells the ribosome what to make by giving it instructions, and the ribosome takes the raw materials, which come from outside the cell, and puts them together, like our little mixing bowl to make our chocolate. The protein, once it's made, is in a starting form, so it's there, but it's not done, and it gets dropped into the rough ER, the RER, where it can travel down to the smooth ER, the SER, and other things can be done with finishing touches added to it, such as having a wrapper. The chocolate bars are all gathered together and packaged up into boxes in the Golgi apparatus, where they are then placed into vesicles, our little containers to run things around the factory, and they can be brought outside to be released and therefore go to wherever they're heading. There are a couple of more things that this factory needs. First of all, it doesn't have any energy right now. So if it's going to run on energy, we need to provide it with some generators. So perhaps we have a generator that produces energy. That would be our mitochondria. Here, I'm going to make our generator make big lightning bolts because it makes energy. So mitochondria provide the energy for the cell. And there's usually a bunch of them depending on what you need. Oh, got to spell that right. Mitochondria. So it's our mitochondria providing the energy. And then what would happen if we, for example, accidentally dropped some chocolate on the floor? I wouldn't want to leave chocolate on the floor. So we need a way to help clean up the cell. We have little compartments to help do that. And those compartments boop, are more vesicles, only this time they contain a really good cleaning product. You know, like Lysol because they are lysosomes. So lysosomes are able to help clean up the cell by removing things that don't belong and breaking things down. So that's my little Lysol bottle for our lysosome. There are a few more things that the cell needs. Fair warning, the factory metaphor can get a little bit crazy here, but that's okay. What if my factory want it to be in a different place. I needed to move it down the road, down a bunch of roads to a different state. It might want to have a way to pick up and crawl somewhere or to help move other stuff around. In this case, I might add to it something to help the bottom of the cell pick up and move. That stuff would be called cilia. Now, if the factory really wanted to go a long, long way, then it might have to swim through an ocean or through the Gulf of Mexico to get to South America, in which case I might provide it with some flagella. Both cilia and flagella are important cell structures, but not as many cells in the human body have them. Cilia you'll find in the respiratory tract because it helps to move things that get in when you breathe. And flagella is only found on one human cell, and it is only the sperm cell, so it's only in some of the humans. So I hope you have a better sense of what cellular organelles are and what they do in a cell, as well as being able to follow the process of protein production for cells, because it's important. Proteins do everything. Got to be able to make them. Thanks. <laughs>